Testing. Testing. Testing.
Can you hear me? I don't know if I set up my audio right. Oh, okay. I have no idea how many people are watching. I'm not sure which interface to look at. Google Plus. Uh, let's see, YouTube. Oh, six viewers, okay. It's like three different windows to check. Uh, I guess if you guys want to ask any questions, I'll uh, check the YouTube comments as they fill in.
sure why a harem is still hanging out in the room. So one more thing to draw. She's not actually contributing on this page, at least not in here. Missed next page or two. It's easy to draw an exit for her. I'm actually not sure which uh, mic I'm using. Hang on. I've got one sitting in front of my face and another one across the uh, desk. Uh, settings. To some default device. Um, let's do this thing. You guys are getting some audio. Hopefully it's not like the fan isn't blowing right on the microphone or anything. Probably a lot less exciting to watch me draw than uh, a lot of the web cartoonists, just because it takes me about you know four or five hours to actually pencil a page. Whereas if you've ever, <coughs> ever seen Jeff Jock's live streams, the guy that does um, questionable content, he can do a page start to finish in like two and a half three hours. Of course, he's been doing it for twelve years now, I think. And he also does simpler uh, colors. He does flat coloring on his characters, which I've considered doing because that's how uh, Fred Perry does it in Gold Digger. He does uh, like a deep color depth on his backgrounds, but the characters look more cel shaded. And I've read an entire issue and then not even realized, you know, all the characters were just two tone coloring. Oops. The buckles all over. It was a bad design decision. Should have just said they were Velcro. Oh, it's not like they can't update their costumes. They all wear those green jackets because that's why I was your Max Man. <coughs> For whatever reason. But as I kind of developed the comic further, I was thinking, you know, if it's a SWAT team, maybe they should be wearing, you know, black body gloves with armor over top of it. I don't really know how to draw that stuff. I'd have to get some references, though.
picture of Perry's face on the bottom panel. Something completely drawn, and then decide I don't like it, and then cut it out, and then save it to another layer. Like I'm actually going to use it somewhere, but I never do. The program is uh, Paint Tool Sci, <coughs> which I like because um, when I was first sitting down to do this, I, uh, I used to use Photoshop all the time, and uh, um, I actually started off using Photoshop with a mouse. I mean, not drawing the comic, but like way back in the day. Um, but, you know, I've tried a bunch of different programs over the years. Uh, you know, Painter and Open Canvas and all these other Japanese programs and Manga Studio. And really, I think Photoshop is like the worst program for cartooning in. I mean, it has a lot of power and features. And it's great for doing coloring and stuff and like advanced effects in Photoshop and whatever. It has like a lot of nice tools, but like when I... When I pencil something in Photoshop, I don't know if I load that up, if it'll show that stream. I think it will. Well, I don't know if it'll show you it on the, on the small monitor, but I would get these lines that looked like like this. They'd be kind of wavy. Like, no matter how steady I held my hand, the lines would come out kind of cruddy like that. But Paint Tool Sci has a, this, this stabilizer thing. I don't know how to zoom in here on the screen. Um, I guess I can't, but uh, it goes from 0 up to like S7. I always keep it at 15. So 0 is kind of like just your one-to-one -one input, you know? And even that, I think, is better than what Photoshop produces, because the lines come out really smooth. I leave it at 15, because that gives a, a bit of correction. But it's not like Manga Studio, where you draw a line, and all of a sudden it snaps to a, you know, a, a, a fixed path. It just, as you draw, it comes out very smooth. And you can set it way up to here. You see it, it... Well, I guess you can't see it, but it's actually trailing behind the pencil. It's actually taking a few seconds to update, but the lines that come out of it look like, you know, if I zoom in, they're anti-alias, they're really nice looking lines, which when I'm done, doesn't really matter that much, because it's that big when I'm done. Like, you know, the lines I was just drawing are like, little tiny bits right there. But when I get in real close, like this is 100% zoom here, so I can really nice details in the lines, and unfortunately it spoiled me. So I keep investigating other programs that have better tool sets, like Manu Studio has the perspective tools in it, um, but I don't like the way, I don't like the lines it produces, and I've messed with it and messed with it and messed with it, and I know a lot of people swear by it, and it, it does have some really nice tools, but um, Oops. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I'm spoiled on the lines that come out of out of Psy. But it is kind of getting to the point where, you know, like when I first started drawing, I mean, you look at the original comics I did. I'm kind of sleepy. Um, the backgrounds, I mean, I was experimenting with, like, uh, what was the program? Google SketchUp to do backgrounds, which is kind of nice in theory, but 
unfortunately, when you export, you know, if you want them to export at high res, the lines always come out really thin. Um, and it just, it looks like it's been 3D rendered. So I, I was never able to find a way to do that that I liked. Um, so I've been hand doing all the backgrounds. And Mangus, or I'm sorry, Sai has one feature, which I'll show you in a second as soon as I get this eye figured out. I should have she's asleep. Um, but it lets you do like vector lines, which is actually one thing that Photoshop doesn't do very well. But unfortunately, Psy is severely lacking in tools. I mean, it doesn't, not even the Wizbang stuff like the 3D features, it doesn't even have a text tool. Um, and it, it doesn't have a polygon lasso tool. So if you want to select something, you have to hand trace all the way around it. The only way you can get a straight line out of a selection is you select something here, draw it around this way, and let go, and then it fills that in. But being able to just point, 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 point is extremely, uh, is extremely useful. Yeah, I do all my lettering in Illustrator. And Illustrator has a way you can do uh, perspective, and I've, I've done that on a few pages as well. I've never found just like, there's no one program that has everything that I want. I wish, I wish they were still developing Manga Studio, but I assume that what happened was, or I'm sorry, Psy. Because <coughs> they haven't put out a new version of Psy in a long time, and I think what happened was a lot of guys that were working on Psy wound up getting absorbed into other studios and were working on stuff like, there's a program that came out called Illa Studio, um, which is sort of like halfway between Manga Studio and Photoshop, which sounds ideal, but again, it's just, I'm too spoiled on the way Psy does lines. There was another program I tried out today, actually, which is called Clip Studio, which is another one of those ones that kind of merges Photoshop and Manga Studio from a different studio. And it looks like it has actually some really nice tools. I'm going to have to mess with it. Unfortunately, it's not translated, so... It's a little pain in the butt to use. I'm trying to figure anything out on it. And my wife just walked in. Give me a second here. By the way, I'm working on the. <coughs> if anyone's wondering, I'm working on the big Cintiq, not the most recent one. I've got the 21 inch, um, 20 inch or something. So I have the bad habit of zooming in too far, and then I wind up drawing stuff all out of proportion because um, I'm not looking at the whole image, and then I have to like fix it. But hey, at least Sai has transform tools. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, here. I've stopped penciling the chokers because. They're very easy to draw. You don't need to ink them beforehand, usually. I mean, tactical throat mics have a chokers.
They just look weird on the guys. I just couldn't justify them not wearing them if the girls had to, because Maximo just wouldn't go for it. Yeah, the Cintiq, the 20, is, is really good. If you can pick up one used, which is fairly likely now that they've come out with several new versions <coughs> of the large one. Um, I mean, it's, you know, originally $2,000, but I don't know what kind of real discount you can get on it. Maybe, you know, a few hundred bucks off if somebody's trying to defray the cost of one of the new ones. But, uh, yeah, it's really good. I have, I have the big one, I have the 20, and then also the, uh, what is that one? 12 that I got from the wife so she could help with inks and stuff, which she hasn't been able to do lately because I've not gotten far enough ahead. Because it's pretty much I pencil on Friday and Saturday and then immediately jump into the inking. But I've got both of those, and the 12 is, I would say, you know, if you have the option between the two of them, definitely save up and get the big one because if nothing else, like all the tools here on the side, I mean, you can, in most programs you can hit tab and the tools go away, but um, just vertically, like the screen cuts off like in the middle of her hand like that. Maybe not quite that far up, but you just don't have room for the tools on the same screen. You know, just get a regular Wacom tablet and then save up for the screen. Although, man, the new ones. Wacom seriously needs some competition because they have their, their kind of like big key model one, which is 24, 2600 bucks, and they have one with multi-touch. And I guess it has a better screen, too, or something, but, I mean, it's $1,000 more. They desperately need some real competition in the market. Yeah, the um, heat wave and harem, I assume you mean, um, do look actually quite a bit alike. The thing is, actually, uh, heat wave isn't really my character. I had a friend who uh, died, unfortunately, but he uh, he was a buddy of mine that we would draw comics, little just little ash can pencil comics and stuff like that, and he had. A few of his characters that uh, that I thought uh, were fairly amusing, and you know, he obviously isn't using them anymore. So, so yeah, I think actually his version of Heatwave actually had freckles, but uh, Harem kind of beat her to the punch. Ugh, so hard to draw.
Make your face looks small. Yeah, it's one thing I definitely did wrong with, uh, <clears throat> with I think, Harem is that she doesn't have a distinctive feature necessarily that she carries over from one uh, body to the next. I mean, the scar wouldn't make sense because that would only have a, that would only have a one on one of the bodies. But I kind of relied on the fact that the uh, chokers would give it away. And some of the weird eye color. Uh, but she's hard to do that for anyway, because all of her bodies look different. Get the lanyard. Speed this one to get her actually on the team so I can ditch the flip of the lanyard.
That's about. Well, I'll probably clean this up a little bit. That's about it for the pencils. I'm going to letter it here in a minute, which I do in Illustrator since, like I said, uh, <coughs> side is a text tool. I letter the same way that uh, Scott McCloud does, the guy who wrote um, uh, several books. I don't remember the name of them. Um, but if you go on YouTube and search Scott McCloud lettering, he's a way that he does it in Illustrator that seemed like a pretty, uh, pretty good way to do it. Because um, I didn't like the way Photoshop, I used to do it in Photoshop. But the way Photoshop handles vector objects is confusing and enraging. I just don't know why somebody's made hasn't made a program that does lettering very well inside a word bubble. And there's a few that kind of do it, but they're usually the word bubble is separate from the letters. Seems like you could make something that where the word bubble is, you know, wraps around the the lettering and then has a built-in tail and all that stuff, but nobody seems to do that. Let's check in. Oh. Zephan here is supposed to be um, the guy kind of my inspiration for him was the um, <clears throat> the guy in uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Um, I don't remember the character's name. But sort of like, although his backstory is different, I mean, the, the initial inspiration was what happened to him after the movie. I figure he uh, apprenticed with Egg Shin and then, you know, learned enough of the tricks of the trade and became an adventurer in his own right. Because really, uh, Great Trouble Little China, Jack Burton was uh, the sidekick. I mean, he was shown as the main character, but he never really did much. So I sort of uh, Googled the actor that played uh, I've seen the movie like 40 times and I can't remember what his name was. But uh, and then I kind of just manually tried to age him up a little bit. So he's kind of the base for Zephan. Yeah, this is just um, this is just penciling. I, uh, I it's probably arguable that I spend too much time on it, but if I'm gonna get to the point where I'm far enough ahead that I can hang, hand off uh, a page to my wife to help ink it. And she's not an illustrator, but, you know, remember that conversation in, what was it, Chasing Amy about an inker basically just being a tracer? I mean, obviously a professional inker is, can bring more to it than that, but, you know, she's just getting started. She's improved a lot from the few times that she's, uh, she's tried to help out with it. And obviously the goal is to get her doing it enough that she actually becomes quite proficient at it. But she's great for doing, you know, not like the high detail stuff, like faces, because I, I never really pencil the faces quite exactly like I want them anyway, so I wind up touching them up as I ink. So, but if I... If I get the pencils, you know, pretty tight, 
then I can give them to her to help out. I just, I just need to. <laughs> the minute I finish one page, I need to start working on the next one. That's generally not what happens. But I pretty much spend all weekend working on these, and then I'm pretty much ready for some Diablo or something after that. Uh, do I work differently on camera? Uh, yeah, I'm actually considerably more focused. So this is probably, maybe I shouldn't make a habit of it. I tend to, most like, when I pencil, I don't, I, I say focus, I'll put music on or something, but when I get to where I'm inking and coloring, it's fairly tedious, so I'll put on, I've watched uh, eight seasons of NCIS in the last two months. Because I'll just, I'll have that going on on Netflix or something. Actually, they don't have that on Netflix, but I have a source. Um, I just have that going on in the background. That's one of the shows you don't have to sit there and watch every detail of, but I definitely work more efficiently. commenter said it was driving him nuts that I had uh, army ribbons on an ex-Air Force general. And I was like, oh, I didn't think about that. I was just Googling generals to see, you know, what, you know, just the, the little the colors and little details of their costume, costume their uniform looked like. And I found one guy that had a good straight on view of his ribbons, so I just cut those out and I used those. Of course, not being a military person, that obviously matters. <coughs> I didn't think anybody would actually notice, but I didn't think about it at all, actually. I work at uh, 600 DPI because uh, when you use the magic wand to grab an area, little pieces like, um, like you've got a piece of hair and bangs that come down like this, when you magic wand it, oh, that was not too tight, but you're working at lower resolutions. Yeah, little sharp, sharp points. It's sketchy, so it's not going to work. So if you magic wand that. You can see it doesn't quite grab everything, but if it was, if I was working at 300 DPI, then there would be like that much stuff not selected. There'd be little white specks all over the picture, even when you zoom out fairly much. And Paint Tool Size is a really low resource program. I think the actual install file is five or ten megs or something. Now, my finished art projects are 130 megs, but that's, you know, pencil layers, inks, uh, probably a few color layers. When I have Max and Lara Dabbler on the page, I have overlay layers for shiny stuff and stripes and things. They get to be pretty big files in the end, but the problem with working at this high resolution is I tend to zoom in too much. Because, I mean, if I zoom out, like, why am I bothering with detail on her face, right? 
It's just kind of cool to have it. I guess it'll look okay when it prints. going to do some lettering, which is super boring, and then I'm going to uh, get some lunch, so I'm going to kill the stream for now, but keep an eye on Twitter, and I'll, uh, I'll probably do some inking online later. Uh, so, I guess thanks for watching. How do I stop this? I have no idea. Um, do, 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 and broadcast. Yeah, keep an eye on Twitter. I'll, I'll probably broadcast a little bit.